ವರ್ಣಿವೇಶರಮಣೀಯದರ್ಶನ ಮಂದಹಾಸರುಚಿರಾನಂಬುಜ ಪೂಜಿ ಸುರನರೋತ್ತಮೈರ್ಮುದ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹಂ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹಂ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಶ್ರೀ ಘನಶ್ಯಾಮ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜನೀ ಜಯ ಆಲ್ ಮೈ ದಿ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಔರ್ ಬಿಲೌಡ್ ಘನಶ್ಯಾಮ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಪಾಥ್ ಮೆ ಕಟ್ ಓರ್ ಲಿಬ್ರೇಷನ್ ಔರ್ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಪಾಥ್ ಗುರುಜಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಡ್ಯೂಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಜಯ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಅ ಲಾಂಗ್ ಬ್ರೇಕ್ ಅ ಬ್ರೇಕ್ ಆಫ್ ಥ್ರೀ ಮಂತ್ಸ್ ಲೆಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ ಆನ್ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕೋರ್ಸಿಸ್ ನಾವು before 3 months we are discussing about bhakta chintamani's some select chapters which contains a portion of such an incidents in which or by which we can give a perfect proof or an evidence that bhagwan swami narayan is the supreme lord and he is ever present and he is the only protector of his devotees from all kinds of miseries now in last discourse we have discussed about 137 chapter of bhakta chintamani in that chapter we have seen that sadguru shrinivas kudanand swami had written a total four incidents but out of four we have discussed two and in those two incidents we have seen how bhagwan swami narayan had protected his devotees and how he himself gave an evidence that he is the present forever in the service uh, meaning in a protection for his devotees this is what we have discussed and now let we see today what niskudan and swami describe another incident in the same chapter 137 of bhakta chintamani ek kaju koteshar gaam tiya bhakt rahe javer naam thayo baad pane sat sang lagyo kadvo sarave ku sang now in this chapter Sadhguru Nishkudan and Swami described to another incident. The incident from the life of some devotees. In first incident, Swami write here the name of the devotees and his village. A small village by the name of Kotesar situated in one of part of Gujarat. Now in that village there is only a single devotee. the other villages they are not believe even in bhagwan swami narayan's faith his preachings his message nothing they did not like bhagwan swami narayan and his santo and that's why they have definitely just as the before some years the white people they have some natural uh hesitation with the non white people in the same way the people who are not believe in bhagwan swami narayan and his devotees his belief his preachings his philosophy they have a natural hesitation and natural some kind of problem for those who are devotees of bhagwan swami narayan and the same way this devotee by the name of Javer Bhagat now Javer Bhagat is a devotee but how he became a devotee that is the interesting thing because in the village he was alone a devotee there was no other satsangi in the village when he was at the, uh, when he was very uh, little age meaning he was as a child and when he was going to his school at that time he came in contact of bhagwan swami narayan santo 
and while he saw the different behavior and characteristic of this bhagwan swaminarayan santo and in this way he liked those santo and when he got some understanding then he understood that this is a true faith bhagwan swaminarayan is a true god and the other belief in the world at the time spread all over the world all over the all over the gujarat and the other region of india that belief was false and finally he accepted the refuge of the santo and in his young age he became a satsangi of bhagwan swaminarayan he always busy he always keep his life busy with the worshiping of bhagwan swaminarayan he is always try to remember continuously bhagwan swaminarayan's divine form and that is why he has uh, he remain aloof from the other activities with the villagers not only with the villagers but with his relatives he also not do any other activities other than the worshiping bhagwan swaminarayan and that is why the most of the people has the most hesitation with javer bhagat because he is not match with their community many times even at present time as a devotee as a satsangi of bhagwan swaminarayan many times when you follow each and every rules describing the six apadre not eating onion and garlic not eating outside food in this way many times when you follow bhagwan swaminarayan's command at the time your relatives if they are not a duty of bhagwan swaminarayan and the other people who came in your contact they have natural hesitation with you because you follow bhagwan swaminarayan's command and they did not like to follow that's why just as today many duties face the same problem javer bhagat had also the same problem the villages they are not the duty of bhagwan swaminarayan and that's why they always have problem with javer bhagat because javer bhagat is a staunch duty of bhagwan swaminarayan and he was alone in a village satsangi but javer bhagat has no any worry there is no uh, he had no any kind of tension nothing because he had no even a uh, time wasting in a just talking with the others and uh, just passing his time with talking with the villagers uh, talking um, the talk not related to god and that's why he never even go or he never engage himself with the villagers in any other activities now once upon a day the villagers gather in a small celebration in the village now as the celebration relating to our hindu festival and that's why javer bhagat was also there at that time the villagers asked javer bhagat if you are true devotee of bhagwan and if your bhagwan is true then give us any kind of evidence that your bhagwan and your faith and your fellowship is really true how can one give an evidence that my god is true i am right my belief is only true belief how can one give an evidence but javer bhagat had little intellect he is no more intelligent like the others that's why he said no i believe in my mind that my bhagwan swaminarayan is the supreme lord he is the only lord of lords whether you believe it or not i have no concern with you i have only concern with my lord and that's why i follow my lord's command not yours but still when the villagers force him and try him uh, and 
force him to give an evidence that Bhagwan Swaminar is a true God. Finally, Javar Bhagat decided in his mind that if I could not give the, uh, I if I could not ready to give an evidence to uh, evidence of Bhagwan Swaminar's supremacy or Bhagwan Swaminar's true God, then the uh, these villagers they have no concern with me, but uh, and they are only passing their time while talking and discussing this point with me. Still, if I want to save my time, then I have to give an evidence and I have to fulfill their wish. Now the villagers said, if you are a true devotee of Bhagwan and your Bhagwan is true God, then now you try to dive from this mandir, top of the mandirs. Now Javar Bhagat said, okay, I am ready. Now Javar Bhagat is ready and he went to the top of the dome of mandir. Now from the top of the mandir, he literally dive. But at the time, all of the villagers, they gathered over there for watching this unbelievable sin they all for for some time they all close their eyes because when Javar Bhagat died from the top of the mandir all believe in their mind that today Javar is definitely made his death but after some time when they open your open their eyes they found Javar Bhagat is healthy as he was before. This is what the miracle, because the mandir is very high, and no no any human being can die from the top of the mandir and remain healthy. Not only healthy, but Javar Bhagat did not injure even any part of his body, and that is why. All of the villagers believe that this is a true devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan and Bhagwan Swaminarayan is a true God. Now this incident teaches never ask from any devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan about the evidence of Bhagwan Swaminarayan's ever presence and his power. Because Bhagwan Swaminarayan is a supreme lord and that's why he had a uh, too much power and he even by his power today we uh, what we can see in the world even what we cannot see because of the past and what we can we cannot see because of the future those everything is happen only because of Bhagwan Swaminarayan and his power in this way Javar Bhagat provided a precise answer to those who are not believe in Bhagwan Swaminarayan and Bhagwan Swaminarayan himself saved the life of Javar Bhagat because this is uncommon sin, uncommon incident because in generally no one can remain uninjured by even falling from a hundred feet. And this is more than 100 feet. Javar Bhagat, even after diving from this much height, he remained uninjured because Bhagwan Swaminarayan is there to protect him. The another sense what I can understand from this incident that the world and the worldly people, they are always forces to fall from the top. And when the worldly people, when the non-believers, when our inner enemies, they try to, when they force us to f die or to fall from the top, then at the bottom, Bhagwan is ready with both of his hand and he catches. And that is why 
even though we face many many miseries in our life not only miseries but many times in such a difficult condition or difficult times we encounter many kinds of people those who are non believer those who never believe in bhagwan swami narayan and even though even such bad company we remain a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan that is because of bhagwan swami narayan's divine power bhagwan swami narayan himself catches at the bottom just as javer bhagat remain healthy and uninjured in the same way we also remain uninjured even this world this world of misery this is what the incident described by sadguru sri skudanand swami in 137 chapter of bhagavad gita in the last incident swami described and that incident is also related to a uh, duty of bhagwan swami narayan one another duty of amdavad pran vallabh he was a brahmin by his caste now once upon a day he traveled as he was a brahmin he traveled one place to another for begging food and in this way he earning his money now once he went to a uh, river godavari but at the time some of the areas where he went that area is caught by the influence of infection of a uh, plague plague is a very very danger disease by which one can not live more no doubt t- today the medical science and many kind of medicines and injections and many kinds of medical treatment and that's why people cannot die but at the time there was no such medical facilities and that's why those who came in contact or one who influenced by the disease of plague then he definitely without uh without delay meaning not more than 2 days he can definitely meet death and this brahmin this pranvallabh he also got uh, uh, he also came under influence of this danger disease of plague and when he fell ill because of this plague he he knew he knew that i did not live more because as the other people could not live more than 2 days i also will meet the death and that's why as he was a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan he remember he chant bhagwan swami narayan's name and day and night he continuously chanting bhagwan swami narayan's name and he recall divine actions and incident uh, performed by bhagwan swami narayan at different places he also remember santos muktanand swami gopalanand swami and by remembering santo he also remembering some devotees like dada khachar parvat bhai gordan bhai now pranvallabh had no any kind of other desire and as he had worship bhagwan swami narayan throughout his life and he had follow each and every command of bhagwan swami narayan that's why he had a confidence in his heart that i'll definitely be sent to aksardham and bhagwan swami narayan himself will come to me at the time of my death but within 2 days as the plague wore his last point uh, his last time came and bhagwan swami narayan himself as bhagwan swami narayan said antakade mara janane जरूर मारे आवो बिरुद मारु एन बदले ते सर्वे जन ने जनाव दिस इज आ बोन गिवन बाय भगवान स्वामीनारायण टू हिज ड्यूटीज भगवान स्वामीनारायण हिमसेल्फ सेज एट द टाइम ऑफ डेथ आई डेफिनेटली विल कम टू ब्रिंग माई ड्यूटीज टू माई अक्सरधाम एंड 
That is why, according to his boon, Bhagwan Swaminarayan himself present there in front of Pranvallab. Now, Pranvallab is also ready, and that's why he walked with the Maharaj. Now, on this earth, there is only dead body of Pranvallab, because Pranvallab himself, he is not a body, and that's why Pranvallab. As a soul, he went with the Bhagwan Swami Narayan in Aksardham. But in the way, Bhagwan asked him, "Do you have any desire, or do you have any wish? Your last wish?" Then Pranulab said, "Maharaj, I have one confusion. I have no any kind of desire to enjoy the wishes or enjoy the pleasure of this world, but I have." I uh, have one confusion that as I got death because of plague and that's why devotees as well as non-devotees they also believe that Pranvallab is uh, killed by this disease and even though he was a devotee still Bhagwan could not protect him and that's why I want to inform the people who are present there with my dead body that I am not meet death because of this plague, but my Lord, my Bhagwan Swami Narayan himself came to bring me Aksardham. Bhagwan Swami Narayan he provided facility to Pranvallab, and that's why Pranvallab came back to his body. On this earth, as he made the death, and Pranulab's body remain as a soulless body, meaning a dead, dead body, and so the people around there they decided to uh, not remain. Uh, the people present there they decided as this Pranulab uh, made death, and that's why. We have to, uh, as early as possible, we have to perform his last ritual, meaning his funeral and everything else. And for that, they took the dead body in a box, and they went to funeral home. But at last time, when they opened the box. Surprisingly, the other people they have never seen such scene, and first Pranvallab's leg slightly moving, then his hands, and after two minutes, Pranvallab raises both of hands, and he tried to sat. Now, first the people who standing there. They believe this is a ghost, but Pranvallab said, "No, don't be fear. I am Pranvallab, I myself." But the people ask, "No, Pranvallab is dead. Pranvallab has died, and you are not Pranvallab." But Pranvallab said, "No, I am Pranvallab myself, and I specially came back to this body." To inform you that I I did not meet death because of this disease plague, but Bhagwan Swaminarayan himself came me to bring his aksardham. And if you want to save your life, if you want to protect your life from this disease plague, chant Bhagwan Swaminarayan's holy name, and in this way. First, Pranulab chant Doon of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, and the other people who were standing over there, they repeat after Pranulab. In this way, after five minutes, Pranulab doing Doon, and after that, he inform everybody present over there that now my time is over, and I am. 
आई एम गोइंग विद भगवान स्वामी नारायण टू हिज अक्सर धाम इन दिस वे हिमसेल्फ he himself sleep on on the bed not the bed but uh, on the death bed in this way he uh, pranvallabh himself give an incident uh, give an evidence to the others who never who did not believe in bhagwan swaminarayan and bhagwan swaminarayan himself give an evidence for his ever present for his divine power and his supremacy in this way sadguru nishkuran and swami describe four incident of a uh, of his devotee's life of a uh, duty uh, duty of bhagwan swami narayan's life and by listening this incident we can at least understand we should not not criticize but we should not even keep a slightest doubt in our mind about bhagwan swaminarayan's divine power not only that but today we have same god we have same bhagwan swaminarayan attain as a form of this idol as ganshyam maharaj and in the form of sant as our guru ji so we did we also should not make any kind of doubt in the form of ganshyam maharaj as well as in the form of our guru ji and when we keep from faith in both of these bhagwan's form then we will also protect her by bhagwan swaminarayan himself by each and every kind of miseries uh, every kind of problems every kind of questions in our life this is the glimpse of this 137th chapter of bhakta chintamani श्री घनश्याम महाराज नी जय प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर समीपे रहो अमारी एह नजर समीपे रहो अमारिए घनश्याम महाराजनी जय सुप्रीम ऑल माइरी आर बलवेड घनश्याम महाराज द पैथ मेकर टू आर लिबरेशन हर पूज्य पाद गुरु जी पूज्य संतो एंड ऑल ऑफ यू डिवोटीज जय स्वामी नारायण <clears throat> you know there's a saying in the world you got to lose some to win some i'm sure many of you have heard of this but this has a much deeper meaning than just listening and then letting it go what do i mean what does you got to lose some to win some mean it means that if you want to gain something in life if you want to get something out of life you got to compromise 
you got to make some sacrifices in your life in order for the betterment of yourself or of others. You've probably all have heard whoever has taken that course, history, about Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela campaigned for justice and freedom in South Africa. Due to that, he spent 20 years in jail for his opposition to apartheid. Apartheid is pretty much discrimination of race, meaning racism. After release, he became the first president of the democratic South Africa and helped heal the wounds of apartheid by the attitude to his formal political enemies. Such a person had to first endeavor pain had to first endeavor some kind of sacrifice for his country. What sacrifice? Well, he wanted to demolish or abolish slavery. Not slavery, but racism in South Africa. But due to his opposition, they threw him in jail, not for one year or two years or five years or 10 years, but for 20 years, he spent his time in jail yet when he came out of jail, he again was determined to do the same exact thing. And he again tried to obviously take out the racism. And this time, after becoming the first president of South Africa, Africa he succeeded. He had to first compromise something. He had to compromise his 20 years of his life. He had to lose that 20 years in order to gain the discrimination of racism. And after all that, he succeeded. This was just another one example. Another example I'm reminded of is Abraham Lincoln, the 16th president of the United States. He also overcame many, many setbacks in his influential campaign to become the president of the United States. What do I mean? Well, I have a list of exact year and failures that he went through. And lastly, what he pretty much did in order to succeed. So in 1832, he lost his first job and he was defe defeated by the state legislator. In 1833, he failed in his business. In 1835, his wife died. In 1836, he had a nervous breakdown. In 1838, he was defeated for the Speaker of the House. In 1843, he was defeated for nomination for Congress. In 1848, he lost the race to Congress again. In 1849, he was rejected for land officer. In 1854, he was defeated for the U.S. Senate. In 1856, he was defeated for nomination for vice president. In 1858, again, he was defeated for the U.S. Senate. After all this failure, after 28 years of struggling, in 1860, he was elected as the president of the United States. Now, so much failure, yet no kind of disposition, no kind of setback, always enthusiastic was his nature and due to that in his famous speech in Gettysburg he said he inspired the nation with his noble words and helped to bring about the abolishment of slavery so first he had to go through a lot of hardship a lot of sacrifice as I have just listed before you and after 28 years of struggle in 1860 he was elected as the President of the United States. Now these are just historical figures that I wanted to share with you to make my point a little easier, to dilute my point for you, to make it easier for you, all of you to understand. Now as all of you know, our inspiration, our support, our main driving force, our Puja Guruji, he has walked on this path of hardship in order for others to strive further on the path of God. What do I mean? 
Well, let's take a look back in his history. Between the years of 1987 to 1994, Guruji had acquired land for what was going to become Kandari Gurukul, meaning Kandari is the name of the village and Gurukul is an all-boys school. Puja Guruji had a plan to make a school for all boys there and install moral fiber to all kids as well as also give them an education. He had inspired and he had thought that I would even help study kids who cannot afford education. So this was his plan. This was in the past. But at that time, he had only had a two-story building there. And even at that time, there was only Puja Guruji and Puja Vignan Swami who had just came here about two weeks ago. They were always traveling around there. There was no other saints at that time. And their position was so bad that they had not even had enough food for even one month. Every one, every the, the first week of every month, they'd receive some grains and some vegetables that they would have to manage for the whole month. After some time had passed, Puja Surat Vallabh Swami, Puja Muni Vallabh Swami, Puja Sant Swami, Puja Sukh Swami had arrived to become saints. They are saints still in our mandal here and they have experienced all this. What do I mean? Well, at that time when Puja Santos came, obviously it was still hard because there was not enough food. So at time, times, devotees from different villages would come to listen to Puja Guruji's Katha there. And what would Puja Guruji and Santo do? Since they had to feed those devotees, they would do fast. So at one time, a group of devotees came from Nosari to Kandari there and they decided that they wanted to you know listen to Puja Guruji's Katha so while he was uh, listening they were listening to Katha they found out that you know Santos had not eaten so Puja Guruji and explained that you know we have a fast today so we are not going to eat today we'll take sup uh, we'll take something tomorrow so the devotees said oh of course saints fast so that's not a problem so the whole went, the whole day went by. Those devotees were fed good, and then the next day, those devotees they inquired again to Puja Guruji, "Why have your santos or why have you not eaten yet anything?" Puja Guruji, after their plea, explained to them that this is our circumstance, this is our hardship that we have to face, because we only get food once a week in the first month, and due to that. We can't really, you know, afford to spend too much. So we decided to make food for you and we decided to fast. Those devotees cried and cried right in front of Puja Guruji there. But at that point, they went to the next village and got many grains and vegetables and gave it to Puja Guruji. And as of this day, those are still those two devotees are very good devotees of Puja Guruji and they are inspired by such a moral saintliness, saintliness character of Puja Guruji. But this was the past. And now, look at us. What can I say? I mean, I've only come in the sweetest part of uh, the whole, uh, you can say, scheme of things. Because uh, I had not had to go through any of those hardships. But Puja Guruji and Puja Santo went through many hardships. And due to that, I could say that due to that, we are here right now because of them and because of their hard effort. But let's look at right now. Puja Guruji has over 50 saints with him. Puja Guruji has over seven establishments and counting. If I can say in India, he has branches of Kandari Gurukul, Vadodara Gurukul, Navali Gurukul, Loyadam, India. And then in, you can say, United States, he has Loyadam, New Jersey, Loyadam, Mekin, and then other establishments, smaller or bigger. If I can name them, Loyadam, Kentucky, Loyadam, Florida, 
lawyer them Chicago, etc. Lawyer them Canada, lawyer them UK, so on and so forth. But after 20 years, when we see everything on a brighter side, who can we say that we have to thank? Who can we remember for this effort? Obviously, it's easy. Puja Guruji. That's why today I decided to do this lecture on sacrifice, hardships, and how great, great people that come on this earth always have to lend something to the public more than gain something for themselves. That's what I've learned through Puja Guruji's life, where he had to lose so many things. He had to lose his reputation. He had to lose his whole, you can say, scheme of life where he is not even in existence yet just for the betterment of ourselves. As of right now when we see that we're sitting here in such a nice AC hall in this nice facility with this technology, who can we thank but Puja Guruji? Patotso, the first Patotso of this Loyada Mandir was just two weeks ago. And Puja Guruji had arrived here for this inspiring, inspiring event. Due to that, I examined Puja Guruji's life. I observed how he lived about his life. And during the Utso, it was five days, the festival. Puja Guruji, he, I could say, all day from morning till night had to meet with devotees. He would eat in the afternoon and then go to the Utso, obviously, do Katha for two and a half, three hours, do the other extra events, come at Mandir at night time at 11, 12, 11 p.m., maybe eat a little bit, and then go to sleep at 1 and wake up again at 6. This was his normal schedule during Utso. Not only that, but Utso is very tiring. But after Utso, Guruji decided that he wanted to do some padramnis to devotees' homes. So local devotees' homes, he obviously did padramnis too, but he had to go to Connecticut to do padramni. And Connecticut is about three and a half hours away going and coming back again. So that's like a seven-hour trip. Puja Guruji had not eaten anything in the morning. And just for one devotee, Puja Guruji went to meet that devotee after meeting him, staying there for a little while, he came back after that travel for three and a half hours. And then he did Katha here on this Vyas beat behind me. And after that, he went upstairs, sat in this big conference room so devotees can meet. And after everything, after everyone was satisfied with him, he ate right after. Meaning, the sacrifice he gives is not small, if we can see. The type of, you can say, effort, the type of enthusiasm, the type of strive to please Bhagwan and his saints and devotees is off the charts and off the scales of any regular or human being. How could I say? Well, in the Vachnamrut, Kadara, Last chapter, 26th Vajramrut, I'm going to read you just a phrase of how, what Sriji Maharaj had to say about such a saint. Thereupon, Sriji Maharaj said, What are the characteristics of a saint who is worthy of being worshipped on par with God? Well, such a saint suppresses the actions of Maya's gun, the Indriyas, the Antakaran, but he himself does not get suppressed by their actions. In addition to this, he only performs activities related to God. He is staunch in his observance of his five religious vows and believing himself to be Brahmrup, he worships Purushottam Bhagwan. Such a saint is in front of our presence. How so? We can just see that he is not suppressed by his indriyas, meaning his senses, his, his sense organs. He does not desire to see things he does not desire he does not have desire to eat anything he does not have desires to smell anything that is worldly related but he has only desires that is godly related not only that but he his mind does not control him he controls his mind 
Not only that, but he believes himself to be Brahm Rup. He believes himself to be the Atma, the soul, and worships God. Such a saint is in our presence as of right now. And for the past two weeks, I wanted to share with all of you my experience of how lucky we are, how fortunate we are, how blessed we are by our Bhagwan Swaminarayan, Piyuda Gansha Maharaj, for his grace, for his presence. I mean, I could definitely say that that Vachnamud, Sarangpur 7th chapter, Namik Sharanik Kshetra, that such a person who is in the presence of such a saint, his mind's chakra, meaning his mind's vruttis, become completely blunt. That Vachnamud is completely true. How so? By living with Puja Guruji, I could say that on my personal level, I had no other thoughts but to be around him, to, pl to worship God. I had no other thoughts of even my body or any other kind of person or any being or anything. Such was an experience that I experienced by being in the presence of Puja Guruji, proving that Sri Ji Maharaj's Vachnamur, Sarangpur 7th chapter is true because he has said that this would happen to a person who is in the presence of such kind of saint. So, we're very fortunate that we are amongst such kind of saint like Puja Guruji. And today's lecture was short and sweet, but I wanted to completely get across my message that we are not amongst a regular human being. We are among a mukt, you can say, a liberated soul who is compared on the same level, if you can say, to understand with the presence of God or with God. So, saying this, <clears throat> I encourage all of you to at least, if possible, join with Loyadam Satsang here. Uh, for all of you technology uh, people out there who have Android or Apple phones, uh, there's a new app out app called Loyadam Satsang. And uh, in there you can do the uh, Darshna of Gansha Maharaj, listen to daily Katha, everything. There's so many different kinds of features inside all in one. And uh, you should take opportunity of that since now we are in a technology world. And not only that, but also join with Loyadam Satsang here in New Jersey if you're near or in Macon over there. Our email is loyadamnj at gmail.com. Uh, please contact if you have any questions. And every year we do youth seabirs in the summer and winter workshops in the winter time, in December time. So I encourage all of you to join us. If you have any questions, just email at loyadamnj at gmail.com. Gansham Marajani Jai Shri Patim Shri Dharam Sarvadevishwaram Bhakti Dharam Atmajam Vasudeva Mare Madhavam Kesavam Kamdam Karam Swami Narayanam Nelkantham Jai Gansham Marajani Jai